Hello class. So today what we're going to look at are input-output equations. So they're kind of related to the now-next equations that we talked about um, in the previous videos. Um, but what they're going to do is they're going to take our input, which is the same as like our x values or the same as our domain, and map it to or kind of give the relationship to the output, which is our y values or our range values that we've talked about in your vocabulary. Um, so what we want to do is we want to use this relationship, or whatever it says, to fill in the table. So in this part, in our example number one, we're going to take the input, whatever it is, multiply by four, and then add two, and that's going to equal our output. So in this first one, I got negative one. I'm going to multiply by four, so that gives me negative four. And then I'm going to add two, so that gives me negative two. So I put a negative two into my table. Next, I do zero for my input times four plus 2, so 0 times 4 is 0, plus 2 is 2, make that a little bit better, so that's 2, 1 times 4 is 4, plus 2 is 6, 2 times 4 is 8, plus 2 is 10, and then 3 times 4 is 12, plus 2 is 14. So each one of these, we're taking my negative 1, I'm going to multiply it by 4, then I'm going to add 2. So like my next one is 0 times 4 plus 2. My next one is 1 times 4 plus 2, and so on and so forth. So I think you get the idea there. So that's just mapping out our equation. But if you notice, what are we adding each time? If you notice, we're adding a 4 each time which kind of related to that. And if you notice our input is 0 at 2, it's going to go to that. So there's a little bit of a relationship there, and we're going to get into more of that once we get into linear equations later on in the semester. Um, so that's that one. Let's go over example number 2. This one has a little bit of an exponent in it. So we've got 2 times 3 raised to the input is equal to the output. Remember, you want to follow your order of operations. So we always do our exponent first and then we're going to multiply. So what's going to happen is I'm going to put a 0 in for my input. So for this number I'm taking 3, raise it to the 0 power, and then I'm going to multiply by 2. Remember 3 raised to the 0 is always going to be 1. So anything you ever raise to the 0 power is always going to equal 1. So I've got 3 raised to the 0, that's 1 times 2, it's going to give me 2. Next up I got 2 times 3 raised to the 1. So if you notice my input is 1, put in my input of 1. 3 raised to the 1 is 3 times 2. It's going to be 6. Then my next one is 2 times 3 raised to the second. So 3 squared is 9 times 2 is 18. You start seeing we're going to get bigger pretty fast. So 2 times 3 raised to the third power. 3 raised to the third power is 27 times 2 is 54. Then we got 2 times 3 raised to the 4th power. Um, that one's going to be 103 raised to the 4th is 108 times 2 is 216. Wait. Hold on. I'll grab my calculator. This is getting a little bit too big for me. All right. Um, Oh, sorry, that was 162, not 214. 162. And then my next one should be 486. So that's just plugging those numbers in, and you get out your output. Now for these, we want to find the relationship for each of these tables. So we look at our inputs and see how they're related to our outputs. So our input is 12, our output is 17, our input is 19, our output is 24. If you notice, there should be a pattern between them. If you notice, it looks like we're adding 5 each time. So we're going to take our input plus 5 is equal to our output. So that's going to be that one. So I'm taking my input, I add 5, it gives me my output, so negative 11 plus 5 gives me negative 6. All right, let's do it for this one. 
So it looks like I've got 1 is equal to 3, 9 is 27. Looks like there's a little bit more of a relationship other than just adding or subtracting, so maybe it's multiplication or division. Since it's getting bigger, looks like it's probably going to be multiplication. So 1 times 3 maybe is 3. 9 times 3 is 27, negative 2 times 3. So it looks like it's going to be times 3. You want to check it for all of them, make sure that it's the same for all of them. So looks like this one's going to be my input times 3 is equal to my output. Okay, then the last one. If you notice, we're going negative 2 goes to 0, negative 1 goes to 2, and 0 to 4. It looks like it's a little bit different. It's growing at a little bit different pace than you notice that we're just adding. It doesn't look like we're just straight adding, because if I did straight adding, that would be negative 2 plus 2 gives me 0. If I added 2 to negative 1, that's 1. So that doesn't really map out. 0 plus 2 is equal to 4, that's, but that's not plus 2. So it's not just plus 2. Um, then we check out multiplication. Maybe it's uh, times 6. So if we did times 6 right there, 2 times 6 would be 8. I mean, 2 times 6 would be 12. That's not 8. 2 times 0 is 0. So it's definitely not that. So maybe it's something in between where we may have to do a little bit of multiplication and a little bit of addition. So one of the easiest things to find is where the whenever our input is 0, whatever we're going to add is going to be 4. Because I know that I'm going to multiply by something, I need to add 4. So in each of these cases, um, so maybe it's multiplied by 2. So if I did negative 2 times 2, that's going to be 4. Plus 4 is 0. Negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. Plus 4 is positive 2. 0 times anything is 0. Or 0 times 2 is 0. Plus 4, give me 4. 1 times 2 plus 4 is 6. 2 times 2 plus 4 is 8. So if you notice there, so this one's going to be a little bit tricky. So we're doing two times our input. Then we're going to add four to it, and that's going to give me my output. Now another easy way you can see what, our, what we're multiplying by is if you notice, remember our now next equations, we're going up by two each time. So I'm adding two to my output each time. That's going to be the same is what we multiply our input by. So there's a relationship between the now next and the input outputs that are going to be very important for this unit. So make sure you're seeing that pattern of adding each two each time. So that's going to be what I multiply my input by. Then I got to figure out what I'm going to add. And that is input output equations.